Hi, I'm Renee. I clean, declutter, and organize my followers' homes for free. This has been a four-part series. If you haven't watched part one, go ahead and stop now and watch that episode first, along with part two, and then part three. This family reached out to me to help their 85-year-old parents who had a very serious health scare. They were both in the hospital for three weeks at the same time and then in a nursing home for four weeks. The goal before they came home from the nursing home was to have their home safe and organized and clean for them. In this episode, I'm working in their basement. I arrived at the couple's home at 5 o'clock in the morning with a deadline to be out by 4.30 when the couple was due to come home from the nursing home. I had a little bit of anxiety to make sure I got this done before they got home because I knew if I didn't get this clean, organized, and decluttered, and all of the donations out before they got home, it would never leave the home. The daughter and son-in-law were a big help in helping me get this done. They were able to give me clear direction before I got there at 5 in the morning, and then consistent direction throughout the day. In this area, I was able to find an old wedding ring. You are probably wondering what is in all of these paper boxes. You're not going to believe it. Especially if you've already watched part one of me decluttering her closet. There were paper boxes in every room that I was in. So I quietly walked into the house at 5 in the morning to start on the worst room first. There were so many items that she had marked trash but just did not throw it away. My goal was to clear a path so I could get to the racking where all the food was so I could check the expiration dates. Once I had those checked, I put all the food that was going to expire first out to the front. The paper boxes you see to the top left on the racks was full of Christmas items. I marked those boxes as Christmas. And that is the only Christmas items I found in the entire basement. The first paper box you see is completely empty. The second one again had Christmas items. You'll see me taking items out of the room. I'm moving those into a larger room that's going to be the donation area. The ultimate goal for this room was to get to the floor so I could actually use a vacuum cleaner in here. I received my first cordless stick vacuum from Pretty Care. I took everything out of the box and then charged the vacuum. I like the LED display to show when it's fully charged. The wand extends to be short or as long as you need. And once it was charged, I put the vacuum together. Hearing that click is so satisfying because you know you did it right. The P1 Pro has three settings depending on how much power you want, and so easy to adjust. The P1 Pro is lightweight and easy to maneuver. The P1 Pro took about four hours to charge to 100%. I was able to use it for about 30 minutes. It even has a light so I can see in all the dark corners. This vacuum makes it so easy to clean all those hard to reach spots. The P1 Pro is super light. You can use it with one hand and on all floor surfaces. It has great suction power. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can get a discount from Pretty Care. On the rack I'm working on now, the boxes you see me pulling out are completely empty. Boxes within boxes within boxes. The trash bags that I'm taking out of the room, I'm staging onto the back deck. Even though it looks like it's going into a trash bag for trash, 
that's actually donation. If you recall in part three of the kitchen pantry, she had many sets of pans. This is just another set that did not go in the garage. These were window blinds that did not go to any of the windows in the house and were donated. I'm lucky enough to help these families and when you watch this video till the end, you're helping more families like this to declutter and organize their homes. The boxes that were empty on top of this wine rack were thrown away. A jar of used bars of soap. And this is where I found the jar. There were several kitchen appliances she wanted to keep and some were donated. These black containers were donated. So now I'm actually in the same room just behind the door and these are all paper boxes. As I'm pulling them down some are empty but the majority of them are full. Even the daughter had no idea what was in these boxes. Whenever I visit homes of people who have lived through the Great Depression, I see this type of holding on to possessions. During the Great Depression, many people developed a fear of not having anything, which led to a mindset of holding on to every possession. This mentality has been passed down through generations, with the Depression generation transmitting it to their children and grandchildren. As a result, many people today continue to cling to their possessions. This is probably not the safest way to use a ladder. I was running out of floor space. So I opened each box up one by one and the daughter was there to let me know what was going to be donated and what was to be kept. The majority of these clothes either had something wrong with them or had not been worn in years or she had marked them to be donated. 
I was marking the boxes with the letter D so we know these were donated boxes. There was just no room to put them in the outer rooms because there were so many boxes. And don't forget, I'm still working on a deadline and I gotta be out of the house by the end of the day. The items that the daughter did want to keep I was putting back up on the shelf. We did not want to totally gut the basement and make it look like we just threw away all of their possessions. So this is what we got done by 8.30. At this point the son-in-law is carrying boxes up and down three flights of steps to put them in his car for donation. Knowing we've got two more rooms full of paper boxes, we make the call to call two men in a truck to be there at noon to be able to take all of the items that we have ready and staged to the donation center. All of these boxes behind me have already been marked for donation. So I'm running out of room in this small area, so as we're marking them for donation, the daughter is taking them and moving them into another room. So now that I've got all the boxes that were originally behind me into another room, I'm able to pull down all the boxes off of this shelf to see what's going to be donated. I'm moving back into the original room where the wine rack is and dealing with those paper boxes. All the boxes you see on the rack to the left are full of dishes. Those are going to stay. Not sure why I didn't take care of this ironing board in the first place. I would have had much more room. Please feel free to hit the like button because it lets me know how useful this video is to you and if I should create more content like this.
the majority of these frames are going to stay. So onto the room as you're coming down the basement steps, this is the first room you see. What I'm doing is gathering up all the bags of what looks like trash, and the daughter's going through those very quickly to see what can be donated. Most of them were already marked for donation, she just had not taken them to the donation center. Here are some of the paper boxes we started to stage, but we ran out of room, and he was also carrying these up three flights of steps. Once I got those boxes out of the way, then I started on this next area of the basement. Can someone please tell me in the comments below, why would you save these items and actually air them out like this? I continue to stage trash and donation out on the deck. Once again, I'm so glad I could help this family. All of these blankets are going to be donated. This is a carpet cleaner that doesn't have all its parts. If you remember in part one, I'd already taken one of these clothes closets down that was in the spare room. In the basement, you'll find that there are a total of three. And all three of those were donated as well. This red recliner will actually go in the trash. When we called two men in a truck to have them pick up all of the donations, we also asked them to bring a separate truck because we had so much trash. Mm -hmm. 
onto the next room. Now this room, the door to the right, is where all of the paper boxes were. All of her books were left on the bookshelf. Almost everything in here was donated. In the clothes closet is more clothes and those were also donated. As you walk out to the door to the right was all of the stuff that was donated. When you walk out to the door to the left, that was all trash. Everything on the steps was trash. Everything you're looking at now was all donated. Are you ready for some pretty spectacular before and after pictures? I cannot believe we got it all done and right at 4.30. The couple got home and once they were able to go down the basement steps the next day, they were very excited about how well it looked. The bottled water on the shelf and all those container of eggshells we left alone. We donated well over 100 paper boxes that were full of clothes. It took two men in a truck, three guys, a couple hours to get everything out of the basement. This is everything inside the truck to be donated. And this is how full the truck was, full of trash. Thank you so much for watching my video. The next video is ready for you to watch. I'll see you there.